9 millimeter versus 40 Smith & Wesson versus 357 SIG. I'm going to kind of introduce this cartridge and do a ballistic test with some full metal jacket ammunition. So our 9 millimeter is a 115 grain full metal jacket. Our 40 is a 155 grain full metal jacket. And our 357 SIG is the standard 125 grain full metal jacket. So let me tell you a little bit more about this test. All right, 9 millimeter versus 40 versus 357 SIG. I know a lot of people are probably focusing on the 357 SIG part of it interesting cartridge here and it is sort of a conversion and i'll explain that in a minute but let me first talk about the cartridge it was created in 1994 and it was between federal and sig that created the cartridge and basically what they were trying to do with that cartridge is they were trying to duplicate the stopping power of the 357 magnum which is known for a long time to have good stopping power here's a 125 grain 357 here's our 125 grain 357 sig so they're trying to duplicate that. And from all the information I've looked at, they basically has. Now the 357 SIG, it's as powerful as the 357 mag, but in a sense it's not. When you take it and you put it like in a four inch or a five inch barrel, you're hitting what the 357 mag 125 grain velocity is supposed to be, about 1450 feet per second or 1400 feet per second, somewhere in there. So it's as powerful. However, the cartridge itself is not as powerful because when you put it if you put it in a rifle the 357 magnum would be a lot more powerful because there's a lot more powder there and a lot more barrel to burn that up is where the 357 sig that is just not just not there but in a handgun it's a lot more efficient so you're getting the power of a 357 magnum but you're getting less felt recoil less muzzle blast and all of that so that's a big deal that's a really big deal and 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 onto that muzzle flash talk there a lot of people were saying that it's the the flash and the bang and everything of that of the 357 that caused it to have such good stopping power and i've kind of looked into that i've looked into that and i've looked into whether you know semi jacket of hollow points played a part and to having good stopping power because they fragment versus a regular jacket at hollow point and from all the data that i have looked at that pretty much disproves that the flash and the blast and all that have anything to do with it being a good stopper. It seems to be that that 125 grain at around 1400 feet per second is what's making it such a good stopper. And when I first heard about 357 SIG, um, I, it was weird because I heard about a story that happened de in Detroit and I cannot find that, that story anywhere. It was a long time ago I read it, but basically what happened was a woman in Detroit was attacked by four men and she shot and dropped every single one of them and then it came to light in that story that the cartridge she used was the 357 sig and that's what kind of sparked my interest in this a long time ago i'm thinking wow that sounds pretty good and there's been a lot of police departments that have used it and they all say that it works really good in real world shootings and there's actually a recent video from may 30th of this year where an attacker came out with a gun from a car and the officer fired one shot with 357 sig and it dropped him it just dropped them right on his back and it was done. So from all the evidence I've seen, it's a really good cartridge. Now the 357 SIG, it's basically made to duplicate the 357 Magnum, but the difference is a 357 Magnum is, uses a 0.357 diameter bullet. 357 SIG uses a 0.355, just like the nine millimeter. Now it can use nine millimeter bullets, but typically it uses a tougher bullet. Instead of a 124, it uses a 125. It usually uses just like you know, you want to use XTPs or, or the the hollow cavity gold dots, not the hollow point, but the deep curl hollow points, much tougher bullets. So there's a little bit of difference there. And basically what they did to create this is they took a 10 millimeter case and they necked it down. And when, after they did that, basically it made the cartridge come out to about the same overall length as the 40 Smith & Wesson. And the cartridges are roughly about as powerful as each other. The 357 SIG has a little bit more pressure. I think it's like 40,000 is where the the F40 is um, 35,000 PSI. So it's got a little bit more pressure, but overall it's roughly the same amount of power. So what you have to do if you don't have a, car, a gun chambered in 357 SIG is you have to get a conversion, but it's really not a conversion because it's basically the same size as the 40 Smith & Wesson case. So it uses the 40 Smith & Wesson gun. And because it's not really more powerful, I mean it is, but it's not significant. You can use basically the same springs and all of that. And all you got to do is get a barrel that's basically a conversion barrel. So that's what I got here. I got a KKM 357 SIG barrel to fit my 5-inch M&P. That's really all you got to do. 
and the magazines even on the M M P, they say 357 on them because they're meant to to load them it's, it'll say 40 and 357 sig right on the magazine so I'm going to run all these through the chronograph together. I think I'm going to run a few of these uh, Remington UMC 125 grain 357s just to kind of see, you know, how that 357 sig stacks up against it. But let's get started with this test and see what we get. Both my 40 and my 9mm pistol are the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 with the 5-inch barrel. My revolver is a 4-inch barrel. And the reason why I use that is because the guns are the same overall size. You get roughly about the same amount of bullet travel in those guns. A lot of people will say, well, with the revolver, it doesn't matter because you lose all your pressure and gas off the cylinder gap. That's not really true. 125 grain bullets, either 357 or 38, you're generally losing about 50 feet per second out of every 1,000 feet per second. So it's not really significant. So it should be a fair comparison between 357 mag and 357 sig when I run those through the chronograph. But let's see what we get with our 9 millimeter first. 115 grain full metal jacket. 1205, 1184, 1194, no read, 1193, 1220. So, a pretty good velocity out of a 5 inch barrel, even with target ammo. Let's see how our 40 does. All right, 40 Smith and Wesson, 155 grain. See how this will do. 1154, 1170. 1175, 1150, 1156, nice. I'm gonna run the 357 Magnum and then I'm gonna run it in comparison to the 357 Sig and see how that does. All right, standard 357 Magnum 125 grain. Let's see how this will do. 15, 16, 14, 19, no read, 14, 13, 1445, 1447, that's pretty much standard here. Now the 357 SIG, I don't think we'll necessarily get the same velocity, but one thing we have to keep in mind is that uh, target ammo is usually a lot weaker than defensive ammo. So we might get higher than some of our upcoming tests. So all I've done here is I just basically sw swapped out the barrel and loaded the magazine with 357 SIG. That's all I've done. Let's see what we get with 357 SIG. 1384, 1416, 1421, 1389, 1388. So some of those numbers were intersecting that 357 Magnum. So, and this is just a target ammo. So you can imagine when you when you shoot uh, defensive ammo that's loaded a little bit hotter, we are hitting 357 Magnum power. So let's hit our ballistics gel block with the three auto cartridges and just kind of see how they compare in penetration. All right, I'm gonna do a shot with a quarter inch MDF pulled out and do a shot without the quarter inch MDF. We don't need any denim for a shot like this. And I have the blocks backed by a piece of fiberglass body armor. So nine millimeter, let's see what we get through our MDF. All right, let's try it with no MDF. One more shot, pass out the block. Let me catch this bullet. And the bullet. <laughs> It came tumbling out right here. I saw it drop. So that's interesting. Basically what it looks like happened is it went out most of the block and it hit the body armor on the edge and then kind of bounced around. So I don't have quite a good shot in there. It's arcing. Both of these are arcing significantly to the um, left. So let me shoot a little bit more center and try to catch one of these nines. All right, we caught that. Now let's try it without the MDF. All right, nine millimeter, no quarter inch MDF, just our gut shot. Let's go up and take a look. One more with the nine because it's just, I don't know why it's arcing so much to the left. Now let's go take a look. So that's definitely very interesting um, that the bullets kind of do that. Now with our plain clear ballistic shot, it's a little different than our MDF shot. Our MDF shot, 
it made a lot of damage and it came up to about 29 and a quarter inches our plain clear ballistic shot about 26 and a half inches quite a bit of damage in there so you know it's over penetrating but it's not really significant over penetration and we can see i made uh, different shots through our mdf so those shots are not really skewed or anything like that interesting let's try the 40 now all right 40 smith and wesson quarter inch mdf let's see what we got wow what just happened <laughs> Uh, let me try the gut shot now. All right, it does kind of look like we impacted this body armor, which is, you know, in front of it, there's actually um, some particle board there. And it had enough force to rip out screws holding that backer in. So that had a lot of penetration. So I don't think we're gonna have any chance of catching this if it zipped right through with our quarter inch MDF. Let's try though with just our gut shot. Yeah, I saw a leaf move up there. So, <laughs> it just passed right through it. Um, it's kind of hard to see anything here. We don't actually have as much damage um, with our 40 because it's a flat nose. It's just kind of plowing right through. So let's try our 357 SIG now. All right, 357 SIG, quarter inch MDF. I don't know what to expect, to be honest. We might pass through, we might not. But quarter inch MDF, let's see how the 357 SIG does. All right, let's try no MDF now. All right, no MDF, just our gut shot. Go take a look. All right, I expected that. It's really kind of hard to judge this performance with Full Metal Jacket. What, what we can say is they penetrate really, really well. Uh, both the 40 and the 357 SIG seem to be kind of on par with each other with Full Metal Jacket. So honestly, I'd, I'd probably use these if I was a person that needed like dangerous game protection. Both the 40 and the 357 SIG are just way more powerful than that 9mm. So. I'm gonna go back and shoot from a little distance just to kind of see how the control of all of these compare to each other. All right, because of recent events, I'm actually back from 40 yards. So I'm gonna see how all three of these cartridges shoot for me from 40 yards from basically the same pistol. So nine millimeter, let's see how this will do for me. I had to miss one because I don't want to look like a jerk. Um, <laughs> let's move on to our 40 Smith & Wesson here. 155 grain. Let's see how this will feel for me. So when I'm trying to get a couple of those follow-up shots, we definitely saw that there was a little bit more difficulty with the 40 versus the nine millimeter. So to swap this out, all I gotta do is lock the slide back, put down my takedown lever, pull that off. And the only change here is we're changing the barrel, well, and the magazine. So there's our barrel, which is very hot. Drop in my 357 SIG barrel. And we're gonna use the same spring. Have the same 40 magazine loaded up with 357 SIG. 
basically all there is to it. See how this does for me. Oh, I missed that first shot there. Let me see if I can get a headshot with this. It's a pretty small target, about the same size as the front sight. Alright, center mass. Alright, so one thing I'm seeing here with the 357 SIG versus the 40 is the recoil is different. It's, it's a little snappier, but there's less push. So there's not really a significant difference, but I did notice those bullets hit a lot faster at the target there. So 357 SIG, does it match the power of a 357 Magnum? Yes and no. When you're talking a five inch pistol here and you're shooting probably like defensive ammo, you're absolutely gonna match a 357 Magnum when you're talking off the shelf ammo like Remington, Winchester Federal, all that stuff, your 357 SIG is gonna be the same, which is the ammo that has this high stopping power. Now, if you get into some Buffalo and Boar and stuff like that, you're looking 700, 800 foot pounds. You know, this isn't quite what that is, but for all practical purposes, this is like a 357 Magnum. And we saw the conversion was very reliable. And that's one thing to take into consideration, you know? A bottleneck cartridge, when it hits that uh, chamber, it's a little smaller than the chamber hole, so it should be reliable. And to have something this powerful and this reliable is actually a pretty, you know, it's not necessarily an easy thing to get on a semi-automatic pistol, but we're getting it with this. So that's what you get today with our preliminary test of 357 SIG Full Metal Jacket versus 40 and 9mm. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.